can you see the screen now yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. okay in the last class uh, we have started uh, the introduction to our uh, machine learning and uh, today we will be looking at the remaining part of the introduction and then uh, we will start the foundations uh, of machine learning so these are the different uh, machine learning techniques uh, that we have uh, discussed in the last class so today we will uh, today we will see uh, some practical uses of these machine learning techniques so we can start from association learning and uh, here in the association learning uh, we can apply this technique in three different areas okay so first area may be uh, the basket data analysis and then we can have web usage mining and intrusion detection and finally we can have bioinformatics okay so in basket data analysis uh, analysis uh, what we do uh, we can uh, place uh, we can place the place a new product uh, in front of uh, in front of a uh, in front of a store and we can run a marketing campaign or we can design a business catalog so in this uh, in this type of problems association uh, mining uh, can be found to be useful to take the guesswork uh, out of what uh, you, uh, your customers are looking for okay so uh, we can use this association uh, learning strategy to find the relations uh, uh, find the relations uh, between uh, the customers and the uh, product and we can make a uh, make some guesswork uh, so uh, out of what the customers are looking for okay so uh, we can uh, use this strategy in uh, in case of basket data analysis so in case of uh, wave usage mining and intrusion intrusion detection so we can find the hidden relations hidden correlations okay so we can find the hidden correlations that can be used to uh, discover the new security threats okay and uh, we can also uh, address uh, the network performance issues that have not been analyzed by human okay so uh, here we can uh, apply the association learning for finding out the hidden correlations so that can be used to uh, discover the security uh, threats and also it can be used to address the network performance issues okay now uh, these are such type of problems which cannot be analyzed by a human okay so we can also apply the association learning uh, in biometric uh, in bioinformatics so uh, we can consider uh, the association mining is uh, one of the uh, one of the foundational tools uh, which can be used uh, to find the uh, correlation uh, between uh, different uh, entities in bioinformatics okay now for example uh, if we uh, if we consider that uh, there would be uh, someone who uh, who would like to uh, who would like to uh, uh, buy some product X? Okay, and uh, when uh, uh, when he buys, uh, he try to he tries to buy the product X. Can also uh, um, can also buy the product Y. Okay, now uh, if we try to find the correlation between X and Y, then we could have the probability of Y given X. Okay, that means if the if the uh, uh, if the customer is interested to buy the product x then uh, there is a chance to buy another product uh, which is labeled by y okay then in that case uh, we would be interested uh, we would be interested to compute the probability of y given x okay so for example uh, we can uh, uh, we can compute the probability of um, probability of uh, uh, probability of taking uh, coffee when uh, snacks are already ordered okay so in this case uh, you can assume that the probability uh, may be 0.7 uh, 
okay so in this case when the snacks are ordered so there is a uh, there is a high chance to uh, order the another item so that may be coffee or any other item okay so in this case we will uh, interested to have the probability of coffee uh, given snacks or probability of y given x now uh, in case of supervised learning uh, so uh, supervised uh, supervised learning include classification and regression so uh, if we are interested to if we are interested to uh, find the difference between low risk and high risk customers from their income and savings then uh, we could have some discriminant function that means the discriminant function that we can design and uh, Uh, would be able to find the difference between low risk uh, customers and high risk customers okay so uh, this example is level as credit scoring so uh, sometimes we receive uh, the credit scoring mails uh, you can remember if you heard about the civil score so civil score is uh, such credit scoring a scheme so in this credit scoring what uh, we do we find a discriminant function now this discriminant function will be based on some uh, parameters okay or some attributes like here here uh, we have taken the two parameters one is the income another is the savings okay now based on these two parameters or based on these two attribute we can design a discriminant function and that function will tell us so who would be the low risk customers and who would be the high risk customers okay so here the task is to differentiate between low risk and high risk customers from their income and savings so here the income and savings are two different attributes and based on these attributes we can design a discriminant function and this function will tell us who would be the who would be come under uh, low risk uh, uh, low risk income or low risk uh, customers and who would be comes under high risk customers okay so here you can see the uh, here you can see the uh, classification so in the x axis uh, uh, in the x axis we consider the income so income is uh, uh, income is represented by x axis and uh, savings is represented uh, by y axis so along x axis and y axis if we plot this uh, data okay then we can see the distribution okay so distribution uh, between high risk uh, and low risk customers okay so these are the data points uh, which these are these are the data points which come under low risk and these are the data points uh, which uh, come under high risk uh, customers okay so this is uh, one of the applications of supervised learning strategy uh, hello you are getting any problem problem you are getting any problem can you hear me properly yes sir can you hear me properly yes sir yes sir so please continue so what are the different classification problems uh, that we can uh, that we can have so uh, pattern recognition face recognition character recognition speech recognition medical diagnosis biometrics so these are the different uh, classification problems in which we can apply supervised learning strategies okay now another supervised learning strategy is regression so uh, for example uh, if we uh, consider the global warming problem so global warming problem uh, we try to uh, find the global temperature uh, every year and uh, try to uh, try, try to estimate uh, uh, try to estimate the global temperatures so which will be uh, found in the uh, future uh, in the future times like uh, initially we can have uh, if we consider this problem so initially uh, we we are having uh, we are having the global temperatures uh, which start from 1950 okay 1950 to uh, 2010 so uh, during this uh, during these periods uh, 
we have already recorded the global temperatures so uh, if we represent the year uh, along x axis and uh, global temperatures along y axis then uh, we we can get this type of we can get this type of uh, distributions uh, in a, uh, distributions uh, for uh, global temperatures okay now uh, if i try to find the global temperature what would be the global temperatures in 2023 okay so uh, until 2022 we are having the uh, data for global temperatures now uh, we are trying to estimate or we are trying to predict the global temperature uh, that would uh, global temperatures for 2023 or 2024 okay so we know the previous data we know the uh, we know the other parameters that are uh, that to be uh, considered uh, for computing the global temperatures okay now we can apply the regression uh, model so regression models uh, come under uh, supervised learning strategies so here uh, what regression models does so regression models basically uh, uh, basically uh, estimate the relationship between dependent variable and uh, one or more independent variable so in this case uh, in this case if we consider a uh, if we consider the equation of the line like y equals to mx plus c so in this case the x is known okay uh, y is known but uh, what are the unknown values here so unknown values are the a, so and, the a c. and c okay so what is m here if we consider the equation of the straight line y equals to mx plus c so what would be the m and what would be the c m is the slope slope of the equation yeah, so, so C is the, the zero crossing point. point. And, and C and C would be the intercept. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, using this straight line equation or using this linear regression model, if I try to find or if I try to predict the global temperature in uh, global temperature for 2023 or for the future years, then uh, what would be done? Initially, we have data for last 50 years or last 100 years. Okay. Now, using that data set, we will try to predict. Sir, uh, we have to place the uh, the, the future uh, so future year number in place of X. In place of X. So, uh, what would be the dependent variable? What would be the independent variable here? So, dependent variable is Y. The of straight line. Yes, sir. Y is the dependent variable, sir. So temperature, mm -hmm. and the so independent variable will be the so number of the year. Suppose uh, uh, further, you can consider that there is a data set of x, uh, x and y. So x, x is given, y is given. Okay. X is given and y is given for the last hundred years. Okay, for the last hundred years. So until 2020, you have the data. Both X and Y are given. Yes, now, sir. in this case, what you have to estimate? You have to estimate the sir, slope sir. as yes, well sir. as the intercept. Yes, okay. Sir. Now, uh, you are going to uh, predict the value of the dependent variable. So, what is the dependent variable here? Dependent variable is the Y. y. Okay, yes, X sir. is the independent variable. You know X, you know M, you have computed M, you have computed C. Okay. Now, you have to predict the a value uh, for dependent variable y okay so in this way we can uh, uh, we can predict uh, the uh, predict uh, the value for any attribute uh, uh, for uh, for the coming years or for the uh, for the future years if we consider uh, the global warming problem so this is the very simple solution uh, that we can and that we can looking for and uh, if we uh, if we if we want to apply other regression models uh, with multiple independent variables, so that can also be possible. Sir, when we can apply the regression model? When we want to predict something. When we want to predict something, okay, then using the independent variables, 
and the other parameters or other attributes uh, we can find the value of the dependent variable so in this case the dependent variable becomes the predictor so, variable so tem temperature in this case the temperature global temperature would be the dependent variable okay so dep yes, dependent one or more independent variables will be provided to you and now based on that you have to compute some other parameters which are not given okay in this case like uh, slope and intercept so in this case both the parameters we have to compute so uh, both the attribute values you have to compute now along with those attribute values and the and one or more independent variable now you are going to compute the value of the dependent variable okay so here the dependent variable will uh, pose as uh, uh, another attribute okay and uh, this attribute it will be used to predict uh, some values for uh, uh, for some event okay so here event is the global warming so we are trying to find the uh, global temperatures global for future years or the coming years if we are uh, if you are having the data for last 50 years or last 100 years then it will be easy for us to uh, predict the values for the coming years okay sir okay now what will be the uh, practical use of unsupervised learning so as i said the un unsupervised learning uh, may be uh, clustering maybe anomaly detection so uh, let us consider uh, there is a data set of dogs and cats okay so uh, we can have the different uh, different uh, different breeds of uh, cats and dog so they are mixed together and uh, they are kept in one data set okay now we uh, now uh, if we apply the unsupervised learning technique, so uh, unsupervised learning strategy, what the unsupervised learning strategy does. So in this case, the un unsupervised learning strategy or algorithm will try to uh, find a groupings based on the characteristics. OK, that means uh, here in this case, we can have two different uh, groups or two different clusters and these clusters will be constructed or will be uh, will be created based on the similarity among the different samples. Okay, similarity among the different samples. That means if we consider the uh, cluster one of uh, cat samples or cluster two for dog samples. So in this case, the similarity would be uh, similarity would be obtained uh, 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 among uh, different samples of the cat, and here the similarity would be obtained. Uh, or uh, determine among different samples of dogs okay so clearly we can have two different uh, clusters over here and uh, we can have uh, these clusters will be constructed or this cluster will be determined based on the similarity of the among the samples so two most prominent uh, applications of unsupervised uh, learning techniques uh, are clustering and anomaly detection. So in clustering, we try to uh, identify the similarities uh, in the groups and in anomaly detection, we are trying to identify the abnormalities in data. Okay. So uh, what would be the best examples of anomaly detection? Spam email. And uh, in medical imaging, uh, if we try to find uh, if we try to find some uh, absurd, uh, absurd information in some uh, image, okay, like uh, if we try to find the tumor in the brain image, so what uh, we need to do? So in this case, we will be trying to find the clusters for the uh, for the uh, uh, cells which are been destroyed, okay. And that cells become uh, uh, that cells will make up a group or make up a clusters uh, separately from other cells. So those are the living cells; they will form a group, and those are the dead cells; they will try to form another group or another clusters. So uh, in anomaly detections, uh, we try we uh, try to identify the abnormalities in data so if we consider the image is the uh, data and uh, we try to find some uh, kind of abnormalities 
or the, uh, try to find the dead cells, then we can apply uh, the either the clustering techniques or anomaly detection techniques. Okay, so both the techniques or both the unsupervised learning strategies can be applied. Now, what is the uh, practical use of reinforcement learning? So, uh, if I consider the application of reinforcement learning, then uh, we can apply uh, this technique uh, for industry automation, trading and finance, uh, NLP, neural uh, natural language processing, healthcare, engineering, so news recommendation, gaming, robotics, manipulation, uh, marketing and advertisement. Okay, so in these are the areas, these are the different areas in which we can apply reinforcement learning. Okay, now we will take an uh, interesting example of DeepMind, so which was developed by Google. Okay, now this DeepMind, uh, this DeepMind AI tool is uh, used in Google data centers. Okay, now uh, how this uh, how this DeepMind works? So basically, DeepMind is uh, used to uh, reduce the energy consumption so uh, they have uh, they have uh, they have shown that uh, using this uh, deep learning tool deep mind they can reduce the energy consum consumption by 40 percent okay now uh, how this uh, deep mind works so the, they uh, initially they take the snapshots of the uh, data from the data centers every five minutes and uh, then uh, feeding this uh, data to the deep neural networks okay and then it predicts how different combinations will affect the future energy consumptions okay so different combinations will be different uh, the choice of different combinations uh, will be generated by uh, deep mind tool okay and then uh, it will try to uh, try to find the best possible combinations that will affect the future energy consumptions. Okay. In the next step, uh, they are uh, identifying actions that will lead to minimal power consumption while uh, maintaining a set of standards of safety criteria. So uh, these actions are uh, these actions are done in every five minutes. So in every five minutes, they take the snapshot of the data from different data centers, which are distributed across uh, across uh, different uh, places. Okay, then uh, then these data are uh, sent to the deep neural network or deep mind tools, and then it try to predict the best possible combinations of uh, the uh, best possible combinations of these entities uh, for uh, future energy consumptions. So this is the best possible example of reinforcement learning. As I said earlier that these are the different applications of reinforcement learning. Now we will be looking at the foundations of uh, machine learning. Now before we start the foundations of uh, machine learning, uh, so we, here we will try to understand the problem of learning. So what would be the problem of learning? So how learning uh, problem can be represented suppose uh, there are a uh, there are a known uh, data set d and unknown function f so this unknown function function f is defined over d now given data we can construct a good approximation f dash or f cap of f so this is called the learning of f this is called the learning of f so our objective is to construct a good approximation of f so uh, we have already uh, defined the unknown function f on data as a given data set d then we try to find a good approximation uh, good approximation of f okay and this phenomenon will be called the learning of f now uh, this problem of learning can be used in different areas the advantage of uh, advantage of using uh, learning strategies is to we can have uh, we can have uh, a set of uh, learning strategies and these learning strategies can be used to address some very known problem as well as some unknown problem so this is the advantage of using the uh, learning strategies now 
there is a there is a disadvantage also of learning strategy that is the lack of coherence so lack of coherence is the disadvantage of the learning uh, strategies or learning techniques that uh, we have to uh, we have to give attention okay so initially what we will have we will have a known data set d an unknown function which is defined uh, over this data set d and given this data we can construct a good approximation f dash of f so this good approximation is constructed uh, constructed on the unknown function f which is defined over d so this is called the learning of f now regarding this problem of learning uh, uh, we uh, we can study some uh, basic terminologies so these basic terminologies are used almost uh, almost uh, uh, all the uh, machine learning techniques so we can we can see whenever we will study the uh, basic machine learning techniques or machine learning algorithm then we will see so these basic terminologies are the integrated part of the learning techniques so initially we can start from the uh, domain knowledge so what is uh, domain so uh, we can consider the data set d uh, which is uh, which is called the feature space and if we consider an element x that belongs to uh, feature space d then this x will be called the feature vector or an input okay and the coordinates of uh, x will be called the features now we can map this domain definition uh, to a pattern classification problem where we can have a pattern or pattern or uh, or an image okay two dimensional image now from that two dimensional image we can extract a two dimensional matrix and two dimensional matrix will be posed as a feature vector okay now we can have more than one images or we can have more than one patterns so if i if i get a collection of 100 images okay then that 100 images will make up a feature space okay so that that will be called d so this 100 images will make up the feature space d now from that set of 100 images if we randomly select uh, uh, if we randomly select an image x okay then, uh, then from that image we can extract the features here the features mean the two dimensional matrix so that matrix will contain the intensity values okay so that two dimensional matrix will contain the intensity values and this intensity values will make up or will create the feature vector now each of the element in the feature vector or each of the element in the two dimensional matrix will be called features okay that means the intensity uh, values will have uh, will have uh, x coordinate and y coordinates so this x coordinate and y coordinates uh, will be referred by x so these x here x are the features okay now individual features may take values in continuum a discrete order set or discrete or unordered sets so these are the uh, uh, these are the characteristics of the uh, features so features uh, features may come uh, features may come in uh, features may come uh, in continuous value or discrete value ordered set unordered set so these are the different uh, characteristics of individual features that may be found in the feature set or feature vector the next uh, terminology that uh, we can uh, that we can often uh, found in uh, learning strategies that is uh, called the range now what would be called range so range f of d is usually either a finite okay unordered set in which case the learning will be called the classification that means the learning will be called classification when the range will be found to be finite and unordered set okay now if the uh, if the uh, if the range is found to be continuum or the values which uh, the values uh, the values are continuous values in the range then in that case the learning strategy will be called the regression okay so uh, this is the basic difference uh, this is the basic difference between the classification and regression models that whenever we talk about the classification models or classification algorithms that classification algorithm in that classification algorithm the range would be the finite and unordered and 
in case of regression model or regression algorithm the values will be continuous in the range okay now consider there is an element y which uh, which belongs to this range f of d so this element will be called a class in classification and response in regression so in the earlier example when we uh, when we saw the regression model is uh, regression model is applied to the global warming problem so in that case uh, if i use the linear regression uh, to uh, solve that problem then in 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 case of linear regression the uh, equation of the straight line the y becomes the response so here response basic in, uh, response uh, will be referred by uh, response will be referred by the dependent variable okay and uh, here y uh, becomes the class in the classification and uh, your response in the regression model the next uh, terminology is data so uh, in principle data are random uh, draws x comma y uh, from probability distribution p okay so uh, if we consider the probability distribution p on uh, d into fd so d into fd here d is the feature space and fd is the range okay now from this uh, probability distribution uh, from this probability distribution p on this uh, data set if we draw some random uh, random data x comma y then depending on the problem at end the data which are observed may either consist of the domain range pairs x comma y or just a domain value x okay now when we find uh, when we uh, when we observe the data as domain range pairs like x comma y then in this case the learning strategy becomes supervised okay or if we find the domain values are x only there is no association of uh, another element y then in this case the learning uh, strategy becomes the unsupervised learning okay so in the in case of unsupervised learning the other element y will be absent so in supervised learning uh, data can be arranged as x1 comma y1 to up to xn comma yn okay so here x is the x x uh, x1 may be considered as the feature and y1 may be considered as the class level okay now the combination of this combination of these two entities or combination of these two attributes may belong to the feature space as well as the range okay now the feature space and range both these uh, both these entities make the uh, uh, make a domain and from which we can draw these examples like x1 y1 x2 y2 xn yn now here each xi uh, here each xi and y is drawn from a joint probability distribution now what is joint probability distribution so in joint probability distribution probability uh, probability distribution is uh, probability distribution is computed for uh, two or more uh, random variables okay so here uh, x and y are considered to be two random variables x and y then the prob joint probability distribution p of x comma y can be determined on x uh, uh, feature space uh, feature space and uh, range okay so here tilted x uh, is considered as the feature space and a for tilted x is considered as the range okay now over this distribution we can compute the joint probability distribution uh, for two random variables x and y okay now uh, such type of data will be called the marked data okay so marked data marked data is basically used in the supervised learning uh, supervised learning applications that means the applications which are using the supervised learning strategies so that are used uh, that are used the marked data okay and this marked data uh, marked data can be uh, can be drawn from the joint probability distribution uh, uh, joint probability distribution uh, of uh, random variables x and y on x into f of x 
okay now here you can see that uh, here we have been uh, here we have been determine the joint probability distribution for two different uh, cases so in the uh, first case here, so here the p of x comma y is the joint probability distribution or uh, here we can uh, see the p of y this p of y is the probability on uh, probability of so this y is uh, drawn from the marginal probability of p y on fx okay fx means here the here tilted x uh, refers to the uh, features and f of this tilted x refers to the range okay that means this py refers to the marginal probability so y can be drawn from this marginal probability uh, marginal probability py on f of x okay and uh, we can uh, and the corresponding uh, corresponding probability for x can be computed from this uh, probability distribution okay or conditional probability uh, p of x given y so this is the conditional probability this is the marginal probability or prior probability and this is the joint probability distribution now in the another case uh, we can consider the another case in which uh, we can draw uh, we can draw the uh, draw the uh, uh, features a uh, feature vector x from the marginal probability uh, px on x and the corresponding uh, corresponding y uh, can be drawn from the conditional probability p of y given x on fx okay so uh, both this uh, in both the cases uh, we can uh, uh, determine the classification uh, we can determine the de discriminant classification uh, function but the later uh, but the later case we can use for uh, regression okay so this would be uh, this would be appropriate for the regression if we consider this case both these cases can be uh, both these uh, cases or both these uh, uh, functions can be used for uh, classification but uh, the second one is more appropriate for the more appropriate for the regression because uh, in the regression we uh, as, uh, we find the good approximation uh, we find the good approximation over uh, uh, over x so when uh, x is given so we can uh, find the approximation of uh, y and we can write fx f f dash y equals to so this can be we can write probability of y given x so we can write small x so small x could be a data point data point in the feature vector okay so both these cases we can uh, use for classification but the uh, but the later one would be appropriate for the regression now in case of unsupervised learning the data can be uh, data can be arranged as uh, data can be found or data can be arranged as x1 uh, to xn and that belongs to the feature space x okay so such data are called the unmarked data why it is called unmarked data because they are other element y is not associated or, or the other random variable y is not associated over here so that is why uh, this data will be called the unmarked data okay and the range f of tilted x is assumed to be the finite okay in this case uh, we will consider the f of x the range would be the finite and uh, in this case will be considered as the super un unsupervised learning uh, case which is called the clustering okay so when uh, the range would be uh, range would be found to be a finite uh, then we can consider uh, the unsupervised learning problem is the clustering problem but not necessarily that uh, uh, this would be known okay so we don't know about the we don't know about the uh, uh, size of this uh, range so it may be known or it may, may not be known okay in both the cases uh, we can have this clustering strategy now if the range uh, if the range f of x is uh, uh, found to be this interval so this means that 
so this interval this is the interval of real numbers okay so the beginning of the interval is zero and there is uh, and the end point would be the infinite end point that is why we are writing uh, first we write uh, second bracket then we write zero then we write the first bracket okay so this means the interval start from zero and this would go up to infinite point okay so this is the interval for the range so if the range is uh, this interval and the function f to be learned is the mass or density function of the marginal distribution of the features then we can write f of x equals to p of x equals to capital x equals to small x so this uh, this x represent the feature vector and this small x represent the feature point okay now in this case we can call the unsupervised learning problem density estimation okay so in uh, density estimation uh, in density estimation we estimate the density of the uh, density of the uh, features uh, from the un unobserved data hello सर हेलो हम्म सर वी हैव नेक्स्ट क्लास ओके ओके वी विल कंटिन्यू दिस क्लास इन द नेक्स्ट डे सर सर द स्लाइड्स विल बी अवेलेबल फ्रॉम टुमारो टुमारो ऑनवर्ड्स आई विल अपलोड I will start uploading the slides. Okay, on Moodle platform. On Moodle platform. Okay, sir. If you have account in Moodle platform, you can download from there. Sir, uh, uh, can you upload in Google Drive itself so that Moodle is bit in inconvenient? No, no. So, I in that case, I can send you. I can send you all the slides to your uh, mail IDs only. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, that will also do. Okay. But during uh, when the first, uh, but during exam you have to upload your answer script on mobile Moodle platform only. Okay. Yes. Sir. So that there is no other option. You have to upload the answer script on Moodle platform. But for now, I can send all the slides to your mail IDs only. Instead okay, of mail IDs. Okay. Okay. okay sir, can, sir, can we leave? Yes, you can leave, and uh, we will have the next class on Monday. Sir, uh, sir, Saturday, I think. No, sir, no. Because, because, sir, 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 previous Monday class has not been taken. No, taken. so you all will be available tomorrow at nine o'clock morning. Sir, I think I, I am available. No, you will be available, but uh, what about the others? Let me know. They will be available. All will be available for tomorrow's class. Then certainly there will have a class. Okay, sir. Hmm? Okay. Okay, sir. Okay.